Amen. Lift your hands to the Most High God and bless His holy name. Worship the one who has everlasting arms. Give Him glory. Give Him honor. Give Him adoration. Bless Him. Let Him hear your voice. Let him hear your voice. Bless him for all he's done for you since the beginning of the year. Thank him for January. Thank him for February. Thank him for March. Thank him for April. And bless his holy name for me. Give him glory, give him honor. Bless his holy name. Thank you, whatever. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. You are worthy, O oh Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy. O oh Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy to be glorified. Hallelujah. You are worthy. O oh Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy to be glorified. Father Almighty, we worship you. The one with everlasting arms, we bow before you. The ancient of days, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the ending, the one who is, the one who was, the one who is to come, the Almighty. Glory be to your holy name. Accept our worship in Jesus' name. Tonight, in your own miraculous way, touch every one of us. Don't let us go home the way we came. Don't let anybody live here without a testimony. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. 
Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. Before you sit down, I want you to pray one prayer. And I want you to pray this prayer with all your strength. Almighty God said, if two of us shall agree as touching anything we ask on earth, it shall be done for us by our Father in heaven. So I want you to join your hands with your neighbor as we pray this prayer. Lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, we are in one accord. Wherever all these kidnappers may be, send your fire on them. Open your mouth and cry to the Almighty God. All these kidnappers, wherever they may be tonight, Lord, Send down your fire on them. Put a name to this menace. Put a name to this menace, Lord. Put a name to this menace. Put a name to this menace, Father. Put an end to this menace. Put an end to this menace. Put an end to this menace, Lord. In Nigeria, put an end to this menace. Put an end to this menace. Put an end to this menace and do it now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Uh, I want you to decree to the fellow you have just joined in prayer. I say, in the mighty name of Jesus, you will never be kidnapped. Amen. And then you may please be seated. You may please be seated. Except those who are born in the month of May. If you are born in the month of May, shout hallelujah. <laughs> my Father and my God, I commit your children born in the month of May into your hands. May is the fifth month of the year, and five is the number of grace. I commit all these your children to your hands, Lord. Please be gracious unto them. Show them favor. When they go out, show them favor. When they come in, show them favor. At work, show them favor. At home, show them favor. For the rest of their lives, every day, let them find favor. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Children of me, shout another hallelujah. Praise God, and you may please be seated. I 
when you listen to testimonies, you must try and put yourself in the shoes of the people testifying. Listen to the testimony of a family man staying in the bush for 12 days having to eat leaves and deliberately fall when there is water anywhere dirty or not dirty so he could quickly drink some before they pull him out. When you hear such testimonies something that thing they can call it holy anger against this inhuman people who for money's sake are kidnapping people. The prayer you've just prayed, God will answer by fire. And when I had the testimony of the of the uh, woman who was attacked with all manners of sickness and disease and then came to the Lord and the Lord healed her of them all. Me, I felt like jumping up and shouting hallelujah. Because he tells me straight away, it doesn't matter the manner of sickness or disease you are carrying. My God who healed her, will heal you also. Anyway, I think the problem with us is that so many miracles are happening among us, so we don't seem to treat them as anything mighty anymore. But uh, I've warned us again and again, please don't let us get to a stage where God will feel, well, they don't value my miracles, so why bother? Let me hear another shout of hallelujah. The theme for the Holy Ghost service next month is Understanding the God of Wonders. Understanding the God of Wonders. But tonight we are talking about the everlasting arms and I will be very, very brief because we still have Another meeting later in the night. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 27. Deuteronomy 33, verse 27. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms, and he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee and shall say, destroy them. I wish we have the time, but well, you never can tell what God will do. We might come back to Everlasting Arms Part 2 and Everlasting Arms Part 3, because there's a lot to be discussed here. We can look at this topic from the point of view of the many of long hands. Like I shared briefly with those of you who came to the Holy Communion service, when we talk of long hands, when we talk of involvement, we ask you, have you a hand in the matter. As a way of saying, are you involved? So we could look at this topic from the angle of 
divine involvement. And then we could look at it from where, from the angle of, his, of the Lord saying, He will thrust out the enemy before you and ask you to destroy them. That could cause us to look at the fact that one part of God is the Lamb. The other part is the lion. Because one major problem with us Christians is we only remember that part that says, be gentle as a dove. We seem to forget that he, when he says no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper, he went on to say that every tongue that shall rise up, rise up against you thou shalt condemn. We, we just think that uh, we are to be doves, just little, little doves. Allow every dig and hurry to march over our heads. And that's not what the Bible teaches. I mean, when I was teaching those of you who were in the school of disciples, when I was a teacher, I said, uh, what will you do? If you came out at night and you remove your bed cover and you see a very poisonous snake lying there, what will you do? Well, you have to be as gentle as a dove now. And so you say to the snake, hey, thou beautiful creature of God, keep on sleeping. And uh, if you don't mind, I will just lie down quietly beside you. Is that what you will do? <laughs> anyway, that will be everlasting arms part two. But uh, tonight, I just want to look at the everlasting arms in another dimension very briefly. You see, when Jesus Christ died, he died on the cross. I don't know if you have ever wondered why the death on the cross. They could have thrust him through with the sword. After all, they still did that with a spear when even after he had died, they see put a, a spear through his side. Why the death on the cross? So he could stretch out the left hand going one direction, the right hand going the other direction, the left going to eternity past. The right going to eternity to come. But tonight I don't want to discuss theology. I want to talk about some beautiful things we can get quickly from everlasting arms. Because his arms are everlasting, he can reach as far as your origin and put things right there. If there's anything that went wrong at your very, very, very beginning, because his hands are everlasting, he can reach there 
and put things right. For example, in 2 Kings chapter 2, from verse 19 to 22, 2 Kings 2, 19 to 22, when Elisha came to Jericho, the people of Jericho say, our city looks beautiful, but we have problems. Oh, he said, all right, bring me a new cruise, put salt there. And uh, he went to the river source, pour in the salt, and made a decree. And the problems ended. You see, because Jericho had a problem, the source of which was in Joshua chapter 6, Verse 26, Joshua 6, 26. Joshua, a very mighty man of God, highly anointed, pronounced a curse on Jericho. And as you know, a curse flows like a river downhill. If somebody is cursed, way, way, way back, in the generation of a man, a big great grandfather was cursed. Grandfather will suffer. Father will suffer. The children will suffer. Grandchildren will suffer from the same curse. But then, when somebody with a greater anointing than Joshua came on the scene, He solved the problem from the source. I have good news for someone today. The everlasting arm will go to your origin. And whatever is wrong there, he will put it right. You know, that's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I've told you the story before of a sister who came, 33 years old, married, with children. He said she, the problem she had was she was still bedwetting. And I said, oh, that's no problem. The, you, you, all you need is a brand new uh, set of kidneys. But he said, before you pray, sir, she said, my mother was a bedwetter before me. He said, all daughters in our family, they bedwet. Our mother was a bedwetter. The grandmother was a bedwetter. Ah, ah. So I knew this is not physical. It's not, something the, <laughs> it's not something the doctor can handle. You have to go back to the foundation. A little digging, and we discover that the grandmother fought with somebody who pronounced a cause on her. And said that from this moment on, every girl born in the family will be wet. We settled the problem by asking her, will you give your life to Jesus? She did. Everything became new. Came back the following day and said, for the first time in 33 years, she woke up and the bed was dry. And then she brought all her sisters they gave their life to Jesus and they stopped bedwetting. Now, if you want my God to go as far back as necessary in your history to put everything right, let me hear you shout hallelujah. That's number one. Number two. Because his hands are everlasting. Why one is reaching to your past, 
the other one can reach into your future. And if he finds anything waiting for you in the future that is evil, he can deal with it before you get there. Uh, when you read Genesis chapter 49 from verse 1 to 7, Genesis 49 from verse 1 to 7. Uh, uh, by the way, um, I want to say well done to the preacher who preached before me. Did a good job. Um, one or two corrections while he was praying, worshiping God. He got to a place where he began to eulogize God in Yoruba language. Beautiful eulogy. <laughs> but they are listening to you in Papua New Guinea. And they are listening to you in uh, Haiti. They will probably wonder, uh, our pastor is uh, praying in tongues. <laughs> so if you want to preach, want to pray in English, pray in English. If you want to pray in Yoruba, we know that we will wait for you uh, because we will later on come and interpret. Don't mix the languages. But it was a beautiful sermon. God bless you. Now, in Genesis chapter 49 from verse 1 to 7, the father of Levi cursed him on his deathbed. And if your father curses you on his deathbed, uh, you are done for. Because he has the authority to bless and he has the authority to curse. When your father blesses you, God will say amen. If your father curses you, it is a settled matter. And so, one of the things the father said concerning Levi is that he will be scattered. He will never amount to anything. But by the time we got to Numbers chapter 3, from verse 5 to 13, Numbers 3, 5 to 13, Almighty God said to Moses, Hey, that boy that the father calls, have canceled the curse. Bring him near. In fact, I will make him my firstborn. Well, you know the story. What happened was in Exodus chapter 32, Exodus 32, from verse uh, 25 to 26, when the children of Israel were worshiping idols, stripped naked, and Moses wanted to discipline them. He stood outside the gate and said, those of you on the Lord's side, come onto my side. Only the children of Levi moved over to the side of Moses. And God looked down from heaven and said, uh-uh, you say you're on my side? They said, yes. He said, in that case, I'm on your side too. Whatever evil that might be waiting for you in the future because of your father's cause, I remove. <laughs> we are all sitting down here today. We don't know what the devil has planned for tomorrow. But there is an everlasting arm. It can go to the future. And whatever evil is there, he can wipe it away. More than 30 years ago, a young man came to me and said, Daddy, I'm in serious trouble. I said, what's the problem? He was 39 years old. And he was approaching 40. He said, Daddy, there is a curse upon their family that no male child will ever reach the age of 40. He was 39 years old. 
and he was the oldest man in the family. He said, 40 years is approaching, and that means death is knocking at the door. And I said to him, are you on the Lord's side? We don't have to beg. He said, yes. And in that case, that appointment with death is cancelled. If we want my father, the one with the everlasting arms, to reach into your future, and whatever evil he sees there, to cancel all of them, if it does what you want, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Number three. Because today is a child of yesterday. Yesterday is the mother of today. The God who can go to your far past and turn things around can take care of whatever is happening in your life now. Why? Because his name is I am that I am. Exodus chapter 3 verse 14. Exodus 3 verse 14. And according to Psalm 46 verse 1, Psalm 46 verse 1 is the ever-present help in time of trouble. He's the God of the past, but he's also the God of the present. So you can go to your past, put things right, so that you will be able to hand you whatever is happening in your life now that is as a result of the mistakes you made in the past. For example, in Mark chapter 2, from verse 1 to 12, Mark 2, from verse 1 to 12, they brought a man to him. Four boys carried a man up to the rooftop, broke the roof, and brought him down because he was totally paralyzed from neck downwards. Now you, you would think that Jesus would see this man is sick, that he would just say straight away, uh, be healed. No. The first thing he did was to deal with the sins of the man. Young man, thy sins be forgiven thee. He dealt with what the man had done in the past before he now turned to the present and said, now stand up, take your bed and go home. I've told you the story of a young man who came to us, one, was one of my students in those days at the University of Lagos. I told you he had a problem, a problem that he kept on sweating like nobody's business. And as he sweated, he also smelled. When you sit down by his side, within five minutes you relocate because he was smelling like a dead body. Doctors have used soap, everything they could. He kept on smelling. He came. And I was going to pray for him. God said, no, don't pray. He has a restitution to make. Anyway, we found out what the restitution was. He went, made the restitution, came back, and I was about to pray. And God said, no, no need to pray. To pray. Just tell him not to drink ice water for two weeks. And that was the end of the problem. What was 
what was troubling him, what doctors could not handle, was a problem of something he did in the past. But the one with the everlasting arms went to the past, changed situation around, and all of a sudden, good result came in the present. If you want God, with the one with the everlasting arms, to touch your life right now, after settling whatever is wrong with you in the past, so that all your present problems will be over. Let me hear you shout hallelujah. <laughs> Number four. Thank you, Father. The Lord says somebody, someone who has this unusual problem and that noise in your head. He said, when the noise starts, it's like when you start the engine of a car, and as long as the noise is on, you can't even hear what anybody is saying. Well, Daddy asked me to tell you the noise has stopped and it will never come back. Number four, and I like this one. The one with the everlasting arms can reach out to your future and bring the miracles waiting for you there to the present. In other words, there are some miracles that are supposed to happen to you maybe in 10 years' time. The one with the everlasting arms who, who say, why wait? Eh, let him begin to enjoy from tonight onward. In Matthew 15, from verse 21 to 28, Matthew 15. Thank you, Father. The Lord said there are there's someone here. There are two sworn enemies of your family. And the family is aware of them. Now the Lord asked me to tell you the two of them will destroy each other soon. In, in, in Matthew 15, from verse 21 to 28, a woman came to Jesus Christ begging for help. Jesus Christ told her, I cannot give the bread, the bread of children to dogs. Ah, he said, I am not sent but unto the household of Israel. He was telling the woman, hey, the time for Gentiles is yet to come. Because the time for the Gentiles came only in Acts chapter 10. When God sent Peter to the house of uh, Colinius, that was when the time of the Gentiles came. But here was a woman who needed help now. And out of compassion, the Valassians went to the future and brought the future to the present. The miracles that were supposed to be available to the woman in the future, she got it that day. If you read First Kings chapter 1, from verse 1 to 49, First Kings chapter 1, from verse 1 to 49, Solomon became king when his father was still alive. Solomon was a prince. One day, 
he will be king. But that one day will be when the father had died. But the everlasting arms went to the future and said, Boy, you don't have to wait any longer. Become king now. <laughs> I will tell you a story. It's a story some of you will, you will need to put two and two together to know who I'm talking about. Once upon a time, there was a man in a particular nation, and I won't mention names, who was a lieutenant colonel in the army. Now, if a lieutenant colonel in the army, in the future, you can become a colonel. And after colonel, you become brigadier general. After brigadier general, you become major general. After major general, you can become lieutenant general. After lieutenant general, you can then become full general. But a coup happened. And the man who was a lieutenant colonel became head of state. And if you're head of state, you don't say yes sir, to anybody. So the lieutenant colonel became a general overnight. He jumped colonel. He jumped brigadier. He jumped major general. He jumped lieutenant general and became general. In one day, May I decree that some miracles that are supposed to become yours several years from now, receive it right now. You see, if you can just obey him if you are willing to do whatever he says without argument as it happened in John chapter 2 from verse 1 to 11 John 2 from verse 1 to 11 when the mother of Jesus came to him and said son they've run out of wine and Jesus said to Mama, Mama, uh -uh, the time for me to perform miracles is yet to come. And the mother said to those who are standing by there, he said, just do whatever he asks you to do. You know the story. My time to perform miracles is yet to come. But that, that time came that day. I decree one more time. Every blessing that God has in store for you, begin to enjoy them from now on. So the everlasting arm can go to the future and bring all the goodies there to the present. If that's what you want, let me hear you shout hallelujah. <laughs> now, the text we read is bringing me to point number five. Says, underneath are the everlasting arms It means God can make sure that you never hit the ground.
One of the verses in the special song that we sang said, if I stumble and I'm about to fall, underneath me are his outstretched arms. And <laughs> the elders have a say. They said before the last tadpole will die. If the last tadpole in the river is about to die tomorrow, rain will fall. I'm sorry, that's the best translation I can give it <laughs> in English. But have you ever wondered that a river may dry completely during the dry season? The river may dry completely. And you would think all the fish are dead. And then the rain will fall. And the river begins to flow again. And before you know it, fish will begin to swim in this river. Did the fish drop from heaven? In 1 Kings chapter 17 from verse 8 to 16, 1 Kings 17 from verse 8 to 16, the day the widow and his, the widow of Zarephath and his son were to die, help came. God is never too late. The one with the everlasting arms will not let you reach the bottom. Before too late, help will come. In 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 1 to 7, 2 Kings 4 from verse 1 to 7, talks about another widow of one of the sons of the prophets. The day before they came to take her sons into bondage to sell, Help came. She was able to pay off the debt, never to borrow again. I don't know who God is talking to tonight. Before it is too late. The one with the everlasting arms will stretch out his arm towards you. Again, I've, and again, I'm, uh, I've told you the story before. We were having convention. The crowd had come. At least what we called the crowd in those days. About 8,000 people. And we, as usual with them, we said we will, we will feed them. The, the elders who say when one legged man is causing trouble, he's causing it for the one who has two legs. When I ask the people to come, we will feed you. I, I, I didn't have money to do it, I was causing the trouble for my father in heaven. And one morning, my wife came and said, Sir. To feed the people today, we need an extra 5,000 Naira. Oh, Naira was powerful in those days. God will have mercy on our Naira. You better say amen. No. <laughs> because some of you young ones, you cannot believe that once upon a time, one Naira is equal to at least $1.5. Uh, those glorious days will return. 
Open your mouth and say amen. amen. She said, we need 5,000 naira. <laughs> I said to her, Dali, when do, you do, when do you need the money? Today or now? Ah, she said, what's the difference? Ah, <laughs> a lot of difference. She said today, eh, in that case, go. When I have the money, I will give you. Because at the time she came, I didn't have a cobble. But I know there is a God in heaven who is called the ever-present help in time of trouble. She left. And I turned to him, well, the people have come. <laughs> they are your people. You can't allow them to starve. It wasn't long after that that one man drove in with flowing Agbada. Not a member of the church. We were just passing by. We were by the expressway there in the first auditorium. He said, ah, what's going on here? I said, oh, we're having a convention. He said, oh, what a beautiful idea. Yeah, in this place, I said, yes, sir. Oh, he said, next year I will be part of it. Oh. <laughs> I'm talking of today. You are talking of next year. Then he put his hand in his pocket and brought out an envelope and said, in the meantime, I said, hey, now you are speaking. <laughs> and he gave me an envelope. I prayed for him. He left. I opened the envelope. One thousand naira. I said, ah, thank God. One down, four to go. It wasn't long after that that, for one reason or the other, the youth gathered themselves together. They, and they came, led by Pastor Kuo. And an envelope in their hand. And they began to preach to me. Daddy, we appreciate you. We we'll see all the good work you are doing, etc., etc. You should not be the one feeding us. We should. Hey, give me the envelope. <laughs> after, after that, you can, you can preach. Finally, give me the envelope. I prayed for them, they left, I opened the envelope, 2,000 naira, I said, ah, three down, two to go. <laughs> I have always told you it wasn't long after that that I sent for my wife, because another two came. And when she came, I said, hey, by, this, by the way, what time do you say you need the money? <laughs> In the name that's above every other name. Before it is too late. The everlasting arm will reach out to you. That brings me to point number six. Oh, thank you, Father. I want to say amen to this one before I tell you. <laughs> and Lord said, there's someone here today who said, you are not doing too badly. He said, but you can be greater still. And he said, I will take you much, much higher than you are. Underneath the everlasting arms, point number six means God is ever promoting. I'm sure you know the Bible says promotion comes not from the east, west, or south, but God is the promoter. Psalm 75. You can read it from verse 5 to 7. And according to 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 8, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 8, I think somebody referred to it earlier this evening. God can pick up a beggar 
from the downhill and continue to raise him up until he has reached the top, sitting down with princes. Let me take the case of David. 1 Samuel chapter 16 from verse 11 to 13. 1 Samuel 16, 11 to 13. He started by being the king among his brethren. Then in 2 Samuel chapter 2, he became the king of Judah. 2 Samuel chapter 5, he became the king of Israel. By the time we hear of him in Mark chapter 10, Bartimaeus was calling him the father of the Lord Jesus. He said, Jesus, thou son of David. David became the father of the king of kings. When God is promoting you, it is steadily, steadily upward. An incident happened years ago. We have a place we call International Office. <laughs> it was our International Office then. It was big in our eyes. And every AGO had a room to himself. And then there was a friend of mine who was uh, with us in Nigeria several years before, then traveled to America, and then came back and came to the international office. And then he was watching the names on the doors. Oh, I saw it, Loris, I need you now. I said, yes. He said, ah, okay. I, I remember him. He was a pastor before I left. And uh, if I remember correctly, he was the principal of a grammar school. I said, yes. Uh, pastor so-and-so. It's not an issue. I said, yes. said, yeah. Uh, he was a pastor before I left. He was going one by one. Then he came to a door and stopped. He saw the name on the door. And he opened his mouth wide. He said, uh, am I reading correctly? I said, yes. You mean... He, he, he didn't mention the name. You mean... I said, yes. Is now an EGO? I say yes. <laughs> because when he was leaving, the fellow whose, at whose door he stopped was a worker, an interpreter. Later on, he became my secretary. Later on, he became something else. Later on, he became a Jew. Some of you already know who I'm talking about. He stood by the door, Pastor Akindele. So you meet Pastor Akindele is now an Jew. I say, ah, underneath are the everlasting arms. When God decides to promote, it doesn't matter where you are. The moment He picks you up, you just keep going and going. I can see some AGOs here tonight. Only a few of you have the faith enough to say amen. <laughs> but if you want the one who's Everlasting arms are underneath to pick you from where you are and keep on promoting you to a place where people won't even believe. Let me hear you shout hallelujah.
That brings me to point number seven. Don't worry, I'm about to finish. How do I get him to be interested in me? Because you see, God is sovereign. Psalm 115, verse 3. The one with the everlasting arms. Psalm 115, verse 3. He's in the heavens. He does as he pleases. But he's never arbitrary. He has a reason for whatsoever he's doing. How do I get the one with the everlasting arms, the one who can go to my past, go to my source, correct everything there, go to my future, correct, uh, remove every danger there, come to my present, settle situation, bring blessings from the future to me, and uh, make sure that I will never reach the, the, the floor and begin to promote me everlastingly. How do I get him to be interested in me? A man's greatest desire is always what he says that he wants done after his death. That is why they say the man wrote a will. A will is, this is what I want. I'm going now, this is what I want. And then he will tell you what is most important to him. The most important thing to the one with the everlasting arms as stated by the Lord Jesus Christ before he left. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15 to 20, Mark 16, 15 to 20 is, Go to all nations and preach the gospel. He said, this is my will. Be to preach the gospel to every creature. Every creature. In Mark chapter 16, if you read it from verse 15 to 20, it will tell you that when the disciples obeyed him and they went everywhere preaching the gospel, he kept on walking with them. In John 15, verse 14, John 15, verse 14, he said, You are my friend if you do whatsoever I command you. In John chapter 15, verse 16, John 15, verse 16, he says, listen, you do my will. Hmm? Win souls. Preserve them. And leave the rest to me and my father. He said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you that you should go and bring forth fruit and make sure your fruit will abide. Then whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, He will give it to you. That's why you hear me hammering, winsels, build churches. Winsels, build churches so that the souls you win can be preserved in the churches. Do those two 
Jesus said, leave the rest to me. I will take care. Just those two. That's why you find somebody like me at the age of 81, not resting. Jumping from one nation to the other, going from one village to the other, preaching the gospel, dedicating churches. Because I know if I can just do this, my future is settled. Is anybody here who wants to go to bed happy knowing that it doesn't matter what is happening now, my future is going to be all right? Is there anybody like that here tonight? Are you sure that you want the one with the everlasting arms just to carry you for the rest of your life? Making sure there's no danger waiting for you in the future. Making sure that if there's any danger there, you will brush it away. Making sure you will go right into the future and bring all the blessings that you should get when you are uh, maybe 90 years old and bring it to you now that you are probably only 20, 25. You want him to get involved with you? Get involved with him. Do his will. When he was going to pick a beggar, when he was going to pick a, a bush boy, when he was going to pitch a shepherd boy from the bush to make him king, he said, I have found a man who would do all my will. I have found a man who would do all my will. God is looking for somebody today. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Almighty God. <laughs> A Lord asked me to tell someone. He said, from tonight onward, you don't need to worry about how you are going to end. He said, I have carried you from your mother's womb and I will carry you all the way through. You know why? You've just had this, the secret. Make up your mind right now that for the rest of your life, you will be a soul winner. You will win souls. You will preserve the souls. I guarantee you, the rest of your life will be from one miracle to another. The next time I hear concerning you, it will be good news. If you are the one I'm talking to, say amen. Of course, in conclusion, you want the one with the everlasting arms to be involved with you. The first thing you have to do is accept this invitation. If you haven't done so before, remember he said in Matthew 11, 28 to 30, he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to him, surrender your life to him. He can take care of your past, he can take care of your present, he can take care of your future. But if he says come and you say we are, you are not coming, well, that will not be his problem. It will be yours. So if you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ tonight, you want him to begin to carry you with his everlasting arms, 
run forward. I know you are very many here tonight, and so I'm going to count from 1 to 12. But if you are not standing before the altar by the time I say 12, I know you don't want to come. And then we will pray and continue with what we want to do. I'm counting now. One. Those of you who want to give your life to Jesus, we begin to come from no matter how far away you are, you begin to run forward and get here before I say 12. Two. Now you want him to be involved with you, you better learn to clap for him. <laughs> he loves those who worship him. If you clap for him, your hands will never wither. Three, those of you who want to give your life to Jesus, come very quickly. The everlasting arms are open wide, ready to receive you. Come very quickly. Four. I know some of you are coming from far away, so you better begin to move fast. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Eleven. Okay, those of you who are on the way, keep coming. Keep coming, make sure you get here before I finish praying. And those of you already in front, talk to the Almighty God now. And say, Lord, please, I'm ready to accept your invitation. Save my soul. Come into my life. I want you to carry me with your everlasting arms. Forgive all my sins. Let your blood wash away everything evil that I've done in the past. I will serve you from now on. Please be my Savior. Be my Lord. And the rest of us, please, let's stretch our hands towards the people in front and intercede for them. Pray that the one who saved your soul will save their own souls also. Pray that the Almighty God will give them genuine salvation. Go ahead, pray for them for another two minutes before I pray for them. Those of you still on the way, you have to really hurry now. 
pray your own prayer as you are coming and the almighty God will hear you make sure you get there before I finish praying thank you father in Jesus mighty name we have prayed Almighty God, I want to thank you for your word. I want to give you all glory and honor for these your people who have come forward tonight to surrender their life to you. Father, please receive them in Jesus' name. Have mercy on them. Forgive all their sins. Let your blood wash away every sin they have ever sinned. Save their souls, Lord. Write their names in the book of life. Receive them into the family of God. And with your everlasting arm, just keep on carrying them. Don't let them ever backslide. And let them serve you to the very end. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Now, those of you in front, I want to rejoice with you because from now on, by the grace of God, I will be praying for you. Uh, so I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. The counselors will give you a piece of paper which you are to fill very quickly. Um, if you don't have a pen or something, they will, they will help you to fill your names, your address your prayer request. You feel quickly, give it back to them, and we'll wait for you before we continue. Congratulations. God bless you. And now while we wait for our brothers and sisters to fill their forms, I think we'll worship God as we wait for them. Over to you, band.
may want to write down your prayer points. Number one, you want to thank him, the one with the everlasting arms, for choosing you to be one of his friends. Because he said, you have not chosen me, but I've chosen you. There are many people who have had the gospel but didn't yield. But he chose you. So thank him for choosing you to be one of his friends. Then number two, you will now say, Father, stretch your hands to the very source of my life. And if there's any evil there, remove today. Any poison in my source, no now known to me, Stretch your everlasting hand to my very source. Remove every evil that may be there. Number three, you say, Father, stretch your everlasting arms to my future. And if there's any evil waiting for me there, please cancel them. Any danger waiting in my future, remove. Number four. You say, Father, because your arms are everlasting, anything that is responsible for my problems now, any evil that I've done, any sin I've committed that is responsible for my predicaments now. Please destroy it today. Just wipe it away. Number five. I said, Father. Stretch your everlasting arms to my future and bring in all the miracles, all the signs and wonders waiting for me there. Bring the future to the present for me. Then number six, this is for those of us who need help urgently. I say, Father, before this night is over, help me, help me urgently, help me urgently. Don't let me reach the ground. Help me out gently. Number seven, since your everlasting arms are underneath, Father, pick me up and begin to lift me up 
higher and higher every day every day I know your eyes are underneath just pick me up begin to lift me up take me higher every day number eight because of the law of harvest you pray and say father all those who are here today as you are answering my prayers answer their own also Bible says we are to love our neighbors like ourselves Father, all the people who are here today, as you are answering my prayers, answer their own also. Let's go ahead and talk to the Almighty God. The altar is open, and you have only 15 minutes today, so make sure you make the prayers very intense. Cry to Him. Wine with the everlasting arms. Ah, set to my past, set to my present, set to my future. Bring all the miracles in the past right to my present. Let not yet become now in my life today. Talk to him. No, no, no.
thank you, Father. Let us begin to bring our prayers to a close. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. My Father, my God, I have a very special request for all these your children today. Father, answer their prayers. Answer their prayer by fire. My Father, my God, you are the controller of times and seasons. What will happen in 10 years' time, you can do in seconds. Answer them now. Please answer them today. Every one of them, my Father, my God, with your mighty everlasting arms, touch them. Touch them physically. Heal all of them. My Father, my God, we had the testimony of your daughter who said the bones were broken. And at Igbobi, they said, POP can't handle this. You're going to need quite a lot of money. And she cried unto you. And you produce brand new bones. <laughs> Father, in the life of all these your children, anything that needs to be put right, put it right in Jesus' name. Whatever cannot be repaired, Father, replace it. <laughs> Father, today, touch the finances of your children. Don't let any of them no hardship again. <laughs> my Father, my God, I want you to please go to their future <laughs> and make sure they never know sorrow again. Touch their marriages. Make the barren fruitful. Provide good partners for the lonely. Touch their children also. Touch every one of us spiritually. As we begin to win souls for you, Father, empower us. Before the sun rises, my Father, my God, 
begin to carry everybody here. Let our promotion begin. Oh Lord. I'm praying that before Sunday morning, everyone here will have testimonies. Thank you because I know it is done. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Well, let me hear somebody shout hallelujah. God bless you. You can go back to your seats. Oh, thank you, Lord. Somebody touch me. Somebody touch me. Somebody touch my soul. Oh, while I was praying, praying to Jesus. Somebody touch my soul. Touch me, somebody touch me, somebody touch me, somebody touch my soul. Oh, while I was praying, praying to Jesus, somebody. Touch me, somebody touch me. Somebody touch me. Somebody touch my soul. When I was praying, pray to Jesus. Somebody. Lord says there's someone here. He said, right now the road is rough, and everything seems uncertain. He asked me to tell you before Sunday morning, you will shout hallelujah. Well, only one thing more to do before we let you go as to say thank you to the Almighty God for what He has done. Has anyone been blessed here at all tonight? Okay, then let's take our Thanksgiving offering and we dance to the nearest basket to drop our offering. When you've dropped your offering, you are free to celebrate with your brother or sister. Rejoice with them. Because by the next time you meet, they won't be the same person again. 
things would have changed for the better. Okay, over to you, man. Accept your offering. He will bless it. He will use it for his glory. And in the name that's above every other name, for the rest of your life, you will never lack. You will never beg. 
You will never be in debt again. You will always have more than sufficient. My God will prosper you. He will go with you as you go. On your way, there will be miracles. At home, there will be miracles. Throughout this month of May, God will be gracious unto you. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, um, those of you who are not workers in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, you are free to go. God will go with you. Those of you who are workers, I'll be with you in 30 minutes time. If you want to ease yourself, go and ease yourself. We want to give those who are not workers 30 minutes to get away. Who, who was the first one God touched tonight? Let me hear you shout the loudest hallelujah.